thank you for joining Wars of the Rosies as we continue with part six, the Allied Degrees from the Higher Degrees Handbook by John S. M. Ward. Chapter five, the Allied Degrees. Under the heading are grouped a number of different degrees having little in common. In theory, the Grand Council, which meets at Mark Mason's Hall, controls a large number of degrees, including five which are androgynous, but in practice they only work six degrees. At Newcastle on Tyne, however, the Time and Memorial Council always works one or two others, including the Royal Arch, Knights Templar Priest, a highly mystical and beautiful ceremony. The six degrees worked in London are not restricted to Christians, and the only qualifications are Mark and Arch. This is despite the fact that St. Lawrence the Martyr and the Knights of Constantinople are clearly Christian degrees. Most of these degrees are of secondary importance, but the Red Cross of Babylon and the High Priest are old and important. The degrees are as follows. 1. St. Lawrence the Martyr the jewel is a gridiron, and it is quite possible that it is to this fact that we owe the ribald tales current in the outside world as to what befalls a man at his initiation into Freemasonry. The legend of this degree in reality has nothing whatever to do with Freemasonry, and is well known to every student of medieval legends of the saints. The legend taught is that of fortitude. This degree appears to be a piece of operative ritual brought from Lancashire and originally worked up into a degree in order to enable a genuine work in Mason to distinguish other operatives from these newfangled speculatives. 2. The Knights of Constantinople is associated with the Emperor Constantine and inculcates the useful lesson of universal equality. The jewel is a cross surmounted by a crescent moon, hardly a happy choice, for it suggests the triumph of the crescent over the cross. 3. The secret monitor is very similar to the first degree of the secret monitor, as worked by the Grand Conclave, and is associated with David and Jonathan. Its presence among the Allied degrees bear testimony to an unfortunate split which occurred during the early years of the organization of the Grand Conclave of the Secret Monitor. It is the only degree in English Freemasonry which is under the control of two different distinct bodies. The jewel is a hackle suspended from a crown, and on the ribbon above the jewel is a bowl. Four. The Grand Tyler of King Solomon relates the story of the accidental intrusion of a fellow craft into the secret vaults where King Solomon, King Hiram of Tyre, and Hiram of Bith were met in consultation. The legend is very similar to that related in the Select Master, though there are interesting variations. In particular, the period of the legend began earlier. The jewel is the triangle of the preserver, point downwards, with certain Hebrew letters engraven in gilt upon a black enamel background. All these degrees are interesting, but can hardly be called really important, whereas the next two stand in quite a different category. 5. The Red Cross of Babylon is undoubtedly old and the 16th degree of the ancient and accepted rite also bears on the same theme. While similar incidents likewise occur in the Royal Order of Scotland, the degree in historical order follows and is closely associated with the Royal Arch and the rebuilding of the Second Temple, and in Scotland is actually controlled by the Supreme Royal Arch Chapter. It has many interesting details, but its outstanding feature is the crossing of the bridge. This, although transformed into a physical and historical bridge, undoubtedly symbolizes something quite different. We are here in the region of eschatology and are being told what befalls man after death. In all the great religions of the world, there is a tradition that sooner or later, after death, the soul must cross a 
certain bridge. Clearly this bridge means the passing from one state of existence into the world beyond the grave to another and indicates a further advancement of the soul away from earth conditions and towards God. The Japanese, Chinese, Parsis, Mohammedans, and medieval Christians all speak of this bridge. For example, the Parsis say that the mourners must rise at dawn on the third day after the death of their friend and pray for him, for at that hour he comes to the bridge which he must cross to reach paradise. This bridge spans the gulf of hell, and in the middle of the bridge, the soul will be met by a female form. If his life has been good, this form will be that of a beautiful woman who will lead him into paradise. But if his life has been evil, it will be a hideous hag who will meet him and fling him from the bridge into the bottomless pit. In England, this bridge was called the Brig of Dread and is depicted in a 12th century fresco at Caldon Church, Surrey, where it is shown as if built like a saw. Among those attempting to cross it is a mason with his tools in his hand. It is also spoken of in an old Lancashire dirge, which relates what befalls the soul of the dead man immediately after it has left his body. When thou from hence away art past every night and all, from Wadi Muir, when thou mayest pass every night and all, to Brig of Dead, thou comest at last, and Christ receive thy soul. The exoteric lesson of the degree is, great is truth, but the hidden reference of the bridge of testing, which the soul must pass on its journey towards paradise is the most striking feature. The jewel is two cross swords on a dark green background of enamel. Sit. The High Priest, unlike the other degrees, can only be conferred on a Mason who has been a third principal in a Royal Arch chapter. It deals with the priesthood after the Order of Melchizedek, and the jewel is the triangle with the point upwards on which is imposed a mitre. Briefly, the Allied degrees link the Old Testament with the New, and the most important are the Red Cross of Babylon and the High Priest, although the other four are not without interest. Thank you for watching, and please don't forget to share, like, subscribe, and comment. And if you can, please consider donating to Wars of the Rosies. Links to PayPal and Patreon are in the description. Thank you so very much.